Well, today on The Family Answer Man, we're answering your questions about the correct way to discipline your children and alternatives that are available to us from a biblical worldview on The Family Answer Man program. I'm David Orgis, and I am here with Dr. Mark Crosby, The Family Answer Man. Now, our time is designed to answer questions commonly asked in both the counseling and church settings, and our goal is to answer general questions from a biblical worldview through the lens of our collective years of experience and education to help you, our listeners, have a stronger, healthier, and happier happier family. Now, we want to thank today uh, the underwriters of this show, the incredible peoples at Winter's Air and Day's Smokehouse and Specialty Meats. Winter's Air is located in Denham Springs and services the Denham Springs and surrounding areas. And Day's Smokehouse is located at 35770 LA Highway 16 in Denham Springs. Now, this show is not a therapy session, and this is not specific advice to your situations. We do believe that mental health is a very serious issue, and family dynamics can be and often are very complicated. So, for in-depth answers to your questions, we encourage you to seek professional counsel specific to your unique circumstances. But we do hope that this episode of The Family Answer Man will encourage you and inspire you to make changes that will lead to a stronger, healthier, and happier family. Well, Dr. Mark, this is a question that has um, come up in uh, pop culture um, yes. about a decade or two ago mm-hmm. and has really gotten popular. We're going to be talking talking about the ways that we discipline right. our children right. today. Have you seen um, a lot of change in the methods of how we discipline children? Yeah, I think there's, there's unfortunately, uh, two extremes. Extreme number one is what many would call, and I'll just try to keep it as, as um, light as possible, but what many would call severe corporal punishment. And so severe corporal punishment, you know, if we're not careful, definitely translates into abuse. And so there's been that. Uh, many who are listening to us today, maybe were raised in a family uh, back in the 50s and 60s and maybe even 70s, where severe corporal punishment was, was used. And by today's standards, some of that would be considered abuse. Yeah. On the flip side of that, there is the discipline quote unquote, that has little or no consequence. Mm -hmm. In in other words, uh, the parent tries to maybe reason with a uh, child who's going through a tantrum and you cannot reason with a child going through a tantrum, but they're they're trying to. Or a parent is maybe trying to maybe be rational with a two-year-old and you're they don't understand what that means. And so the point is, is that you have these two extremes of little or no consequence or discipline on one hand, and the child pulls down all the power. The child rules the roost, as my grandmother used to say. <laughs> uh, the child, you know, ruins, you know, the event or the activity because no one's willing to tell the child anything or set any standards or boundaries or restrictions of the child. And on the flip side of that, there's a child who lives in constant fear mm. that if I don't eat all my peas and cornbread for dinner, I'm going to be spanked. You right. know? Or if right. I don't bring home straight A's, I'm going to be spanked. Or if I don't, you know, make my bed like a, you know, military, you know, colonel, <laughs> I'm going to be spanked. And so, so these two extremes, I think, are, are part of the problem, I think, in today's culture, where, again, uh, parents who are raised maybe very, in very strict standards are becoming very, very lenient. Mm. And now this leniency is now developing these children who are now putting down all the power, and they don't have any real sense of structure or stability or sense of respect for authority. Yeah. And so like many things in life, uh, not going to extremes right. in our discipline is a great Right. Foundation to start from. Right. No, knowing what works for your child, knowing what works for you, knowing what uh, how what your child responds to as mm-hmm. far as discipline is, is very important. Uh, you know, again, I was raised in a generation, and many may be listening today, uh, were raised this way, that they basically felt that corporal punishment was a one-size-fits-all. Right. You know, that spanking solved everything. <laughs> and I'm not saying that spanking didn't solve some things, okay? <laughs> uh, and it wasn't uh, a deterrent, you know, to uh, oppositional defiant behavior. But the reality is it's not a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Uh, Every child is different. Every circumstance is different. Every family dynamic is different. And so being mindful of that and figuring out what works for you, for your family, for your child is is crucial. But that's the key. What works for your child? Yeah. And and what works being undergirded by the things that make your family system healthy exactly. and help your child be healthy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that leads us to our first question for okay. the day. Uh, our question today that's written in, Family Answer Man, so if you want to uh, write into us, uh, we would love 
to have your questions and be able to answer those for you. Uh, you can get in touch with us at familyanswerman at liveoak.church. That is our email address, familyanswerman at liveoak.church. Uh, so the question that came in today is this. It says, I recently got a visit from Child Protective Services. Uh-oh. Right. The congregate, uh, sorry, the concern was small. It was a small bruise on my child's leg after a spanking. So the question, is spanking wrong, and what are my options? Is spanking wrong? Well, let's begin with the two words that most people don't want to hear. It depends. <laughs> it depends. And here's what I mean by that. It depends on who's involved. Uh, here's what most of us, I think, would agree to. You don't want mom's boyfriend spanking the child. Mm. You don't want dad's girlfriend spanking the child. Uh, So that's the first thing. The next question you want to ask is, is, is if spanking is wrong, is that depends on um, what is being used. Uh, For example, I've had people say to me that my dad grabbed anything around him. He grabbed an extension cord one time or whatever. Uh, Back in the day, you know, when people lived maybe, you know, on, on small farms or where they had, you know, cattle or what have you, or horses. Uh, I've heard of uh, dads or moms in some cases grabbing a bridle mm. and spanking their child. So most of us, I would, I would hope, would agree that's not kosher. That's not appropriate. That's not what you do. But I've had parents say to me, I've had kids say to me, that I just grabbed the first thing, you know, to, to you know, spank my child. That's not appropriate in my opinion. I would also say that it depends on the age of the child. Uh, I would say that spanking adolescent girls is not appropriate. Spanking adolescent girls is not appropriate. And so that's important to understand and to note. Uh, The impact or the effects, again, is important to understand. Not all corporate punishment is beneficial. As a matter of fact, there's been some studies that declare that in some cases, depending on the age and gender of the child, corporal punishment creates a sense of resentment. Mm. Uh, You begin to resent uh, your parent. You begin to become bitter towards your parent that does this. So in many cases, here's my point. Uh, Corporal punishment is not a one size fits all. Um, So, but the question again, is corporal punishment wrong? It's not wrong as long as it's not done in anger. Yeah, that's a big, that's a really big point. Because what happens is, is sometimes a parent will use corporal punishment to release their own anger onto a child. And if we're going to be real and honest and open, I would venture to say that most of our listening audience has experienced this or been a part of this, that out of anger, we would spank our child. Uh, Number Mm -hmm. two, make sure that if you're going to use corporal punishment, it has a limit. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a limitation there. Uh, And also make sure that what you're doing in the realm of corporal punishment would not be considered abuse by today's standards. Not only that, I would say this, if the child is under 10 years of age, then okay. And if the child must be older than two years of age, then okay, corporal punishment may be effective. But before then or after then, you know, there may be a a problem with corporal punishment. So I'll unpack that a little bit. Why some of this might seem... uh, very redundant, but I'll ask the question anyway yeah. for the people that are listening. Why is it not appropriate to spank between zero and two? Well, because the child, because number one, as a number one, the child doesn't understand why they're being spanked. Number two, the the chances of injury are extremely high, mm. especially if it's a, a, a large parent, if you will. Um, but the reality is that the chances of, of injury are extremely high, and, and you don't want to go down that road. And not, not only that, the child would not understand what was happening uh, in 99.999% of all cases. Right, which is, you know, and that's, it, it seems like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to spank the child, but a child understands that their parent is their, their protection. They exactly. are their safety, and so to be attacked by what they see as, in a as physical, their safety f- right. yeah, it, is... It's confusing to it's confusing a child and it, that and they it's not can't effective. understand. So then why not 10 and above? Because 10 and above, what begins to happen is that the child that's over the age of 10 begins to create and formulate what I would call a sense of, a sense of internal control. In other words, what is controlling them, what is motivating them, is not in so many ways this, this fear of, of punishment, but the desire within to please. 
So what I mean by that is this. Uh, I've used this illustration before, but for those who um, are listening for the first time, you know, again, go into your mind's eye and the theater of your mind, and you are in a parlor with your mother at a family function. And in walks your mother's oldest sister. And your mother says, go and hug your, your aunt. And you say, I don't want to. She's mean. I don't like her. She smells bad. She doesn't like me. <laughs> and your mom says, if you don't get up and go hug your aunt right now, I'm going to spank you. Well, you get up because you're fear of punishment. Right. Two minutes later, your mom's younger sister walks in. She is cute. She's sweet. She's fun to be around. She makes you feel all grown up. She takes you to get ice cream. And the moment she walks into the room, you go run hug her. In both cases, you hugged your aunt. Mm -hmm. In one case, you did out of fear and out of uh, this, this concern of, of being punished. The other, you did it out of desire of love and pleasing and sense of connection. The point I'm making is this, is that you don't want to have or create a relationship that is consistent uh, based upon fear and punishment. Mm. You want to have a relationship eventually that's based upon, I want to do this because I want to please my parents. I want to make good grades, not because I fear being spanked. I want to make good grades because I want to please them. And the reality is that if you've done a good job as a parent, for the most part, between the ages of two and 10, they understand that you're the authority. They understand that you have brought uh, and have the capability of, you know, changing their life, you know, and, and being the person to whom they have to be accountable to. You, you've, you've laid that groundwork. Now, after the age of 10, you want to, them to have this motivation to go to school and to make good grades and to do well on the basketball team and to be polite to their teachers because that's what you're supposed to do. That's the right thing to do. That's what brings a sense of, of accomplishment and success to you. And more, more importantly, that's what gets the uh, blessing of your parent. But if you're constantly w using uh, punitive measurements, you're constantly using harsh measurements, what happens is you're now developing not a child, but a, a quote-unquote prisoner. Ooh. Because what you're doing now is, I'm going to do this to you if you don't do that. I'm going to do this to you if you don't do that. I'm going to do this to you if you don't do that. And that becomes very problematic in the overall relationship. Yeah, and then also in the overall development of the child as they move forward into young adulthood right. and, and into adulthood. And then, and then what happens is this, when that child's 14 or 15 and you go to paddle them, yeah. they may take the belt from you. Right. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they may turn it back on you. you know, and, and, and the question is, do you really want that? Is that what you're really wanting? So again, right. between ages and 2 and 10, I, I think those years are very important, very formative in making sure that they understand who's the authority. Mm. Okay. They understand, you know, who pulls down the power and it's not them. But after the age of 10, maybe even age 11, but as they are approaching adolescence, the, the dynamic begins to change mm. and you want them to have this internal control. I want to do well in school. I want to uh, please my parent. I don't want to uh, follow uh, the wrong crowd because I don't want to embarrass or upset or displease my, my parents. And that's why that's so, so very, very important to note. Uh, so again, I, I would say this, make sure that the punishment has a limit as far as if it's corporal punishment. Uh, don't do that, which is considered abusive. Um, and make sure that you understand the importance of external control versus internal control. Um, here's the primary point. Establishing authority is important early in life. Okay. I'll say that again. Establishing, Establishing authority is important early in life. So if the child knows at age two or three that mom and dad is the authority, if they understand at age five and six, mom and dad is the authority, if they understand at ages you know, eight and nine that mom and dad is the authority, chances are that's going to carry over into their pre-adolescent and adolescent years. But if you don't establish that, if you let the child hit you when they're four years old, if you let the child's tantrum run and ruin your life, then what begins to happen is they begin to think they're the authority. Ooh. And that only gets worse as they get older. And that's why, you know, when kids are 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, they start telling their parents what they will and will not do. Yeah, and you see that happen, and, and that's where parents then at that point – are scrambling to figure out, okay, how do I now become the person who's in charge? And, and that's when, exactly, and that's when it's a little bit too little too late. And that's when sometimes dad or even sometimes mom will bow up and make all these, you know, uh, 
punishing threats mm-hmm. to their 13 year old because they didn't do it when they were three years old. Yeah. And so, and so there lies, you know, part of the concern, part of the problem that we're, we're seeing today. So establishing authority is important early in life. The next point is this, as they get older, establishing a relationship also is very important because again, there's something inside of the child that wants the parent in their world, in their life. So establishing that relationship is important as they get older. So here's some alternatives. The person asked about alternatives to, to uh, corporal punishment. And I think there's some good alternatives out there that may be even more effective than what we call today corporal punishment. Number one, um, natural consequences. In other words, if a child, uh, let's say using athletics as an example, doesn't show up for practice, you know, he or she's lazy, I don't feel like going, (laughs) or they don't make the grades and they get kicked off the team, don't be the parent that goes to the principal or to the coach and says, well, look, my child, you know, he made a D minus, you know, in algebra, or I know she hasn't been to practice for two weeks, but because she was just lazy. But, you know, do you think we could work something out? Right. No, let the natural consequences, you know, be a part of this. You didn't make the grade. Uh, you didn't show up for practice. You get kicked off the team. Uh, some parents, you know, hate this. But if your child is not doing their homework, if they're not studying for the exam, they may have to repeat the fourth grade. That's a natural consequence. Um, Sometimes as the child gets older, you say to your child, hey, put on deodorant, brush your teeth, take a shower. And they may not want to listen. You're talking about middle school boys, aren't you? Exactly. They may not want to listen. But the first time that little girl says, you stink, you smell bad, your breath is awful. That may be a natural consequence to say, maybe it's time for me to put on deodorant, brush my teeth, take my shower. Um, Not only that, but sometimes as they get older, when they're 16, 17, uh, you tell them drive safely, but they got a speeding ticket. Mm. No, mom and dad, don't fix the ticket. Don't call your deputy friend. Don't call just because you know the sheriff. No, let them pay their speeding ticket. Don't you pay it, mom or dad. Mm. Let them pay it. Well, they don't have the money. Well, you know what? They don't drive. Yep. Okay? (laughs) So, so, you know, those natural consequences are very powerful and very important. Is it easy? No. Mm. It wasn't easy for me as a parent. It's not easy for you. But these natural consequences are very important. Uh, Maybe if they break something, especially out of anger or maybe intentionally, they need to pay for it. Pay back maybe with interest or whatever. So that's important to note. Another alternative is this, removing things that they must earn back, whether that be a privilege, whether it be a, a device. And what I mean by that is this, let's say your child, you know, you tell them to be home for 11 o'clock and they come home at 1130. Maybe what needs to happen is this, um, in order to get that privilege back of having a later night, say from here on out, I'll let you go out with your friends. But you got to be home now for 10. Mm. For the next three weekends, when you go out with your friends, you got to be home for 10. And if you can show up by 10 o'clock each one of those Friday nights, here's what I'll do. I, we will go back to 11 o'clock because you've proven to me that, yes, you can do this. Mm. What happens is this. What happens for a lot of parents is that if their child, say, breaks curfew or whatever, their parents will say, you can't go anywhere for a month. Right. Well, here's the problem with that. All your child is learning how to do is time. Yeah. And that's what prisoners do. Mm. Prisoners are just doing time. Mm. And so all your child's got to do is wait it out and they get to go back. No, but if they learn and if they have to uh, earn back that privilege, then that's what they do to show, hey, I can do this. I can listen. Well, it ties the consequence to the infraction and it teaches how to not repeat that. Right, right. So yeah, let, let them go out with their friends, but... When all your friends are still out till you know, 11, 12 o'clock, whatever, you got to be home for 10. Uh, another thing that I think is important that's an alternative to corporal punishment is a work detail on weekends or after school. Mm-hmm. You know, if they did something, they did something that was defiant or they did something that was oppositional, or they did something that was disrespectful, maybe they have the work detail for the weekend, you know? Yep. I, and uh, my dad may, used to make me chop wood. Well, yeah. And then uh, I would go. stack it up on one side of the yard and mom conveniently quote unquote, didn't like where it was. So I had to move to the other side and yeah. then, of yeah. course, move it back to the original side. Okay. So, so instead of sleeping in till, you know, uh, 10 o'clock or, you know, yeah. uh, the crack of noon, you know, uh, <laughs> on Saturday morning, you know, you got to get up at 730. 
You know, you've got cars to wash. You've got, you know, weeds to pull. You've got, you know, yard to cut. You've got wood to cut. You've got, you know, uh, the dog to clean. You've got your bed to make. You've got to make your sister's bed. You know, you've got to, you know, unload the dishwasher. You've got to take out the garbage. You've got work detail. Yeah. And, and two weekends of that may register with some kids who say, you know what, I'd really love to sleep late. I'd really love to be with my friends. You know, I'd really love to, you know, go work out. Well, that has a it has a positive aspect to it as well. Yeah, it, it is a it is a consequence, but it's not like you said. It's not just strictly a punishment. Those things create good work habits. Yeah, exactly, they create new life skills. Yeah, there. Yes, there's a positive element to it as well. And what I what I've told parents is this: is that sometimes you know if your kids and I use this a lot, you know, and and please listening audience, don't take this the wrong way, but a lot of times you know. Um, a kid will come home with uh, all D's and maybe an F and maybe a C minus. And so I say to the parent, maybe they need to learn how to wash dishes a lot. <laughs> maybe they need to take out all the garbage a lot. Maybe they need to learn how to do a lot of manual labor <clears throat> a lot because with the un- understanding that if you don't get your grades up, oh, look, look, these jobs have to be done and they have to be done by somebody. Mm-hmm. But if these grades don't come up, your options later on are going to be limited. Mm. So you better be really good at some of these other things because your options are going to be very limited as you get older. And so that's important to note. You know, uh, the next thing I, I tell parents is this. If their kids are acting up in Walmart or the store or wherever, you know, uh, stop the show. Stop the show. So you say stop the show. What I mean by that is this. If they're having a tantrum in the middle of the store and, and because they want a toy, you're not giving them, and they're just going crazy, just walk out the store. Just bring them, go out the store, let them have their tantrum where there's no audience. Mm. Stop the show and let them know that we're not going back in that store. You know, And if you pull that again, you're not going back in that store. I'll get a babysitter. You'll stay at home. I'll bring you to your mama's, whatever. But you stop the show. Next, let them know what you don't like. Uh, he, here's, here's the thing. Um, sometimes we don't establish the rules. In other words, we kind of think our kids should know the rules. Yeah. But the reality is you go to the local pool, you go to the local library, you go to the local you know, gym, and there are going to be rules. Mm-hmm. Don't do this. Don't sit here. Don't wear that, whatever. And sometimes kids don't have rules written out at home. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, yep. you know, you need to, as a parent, establish what the rules are so everybody kind of knows what the rules are and then let them know when you break this rule, that I don't like that. Let them know you don't like and, and don't let them respond. Just simply say, I don't like what you just did here. You broke the rule and then walk away. Yeah. And then sometimes you come back later with, and here's the consequence. Which keeps you from... Disciplining and anger. Exactly. And it keeps you... He, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Parents, and I know we're all guilty of this, okay? So if you're listening, this is not a guilt or shame thing. But parents should never get into an argument with their kids. Yeah. Think of yeah. it like this. The athletes are listening. How many of the athletes are listening? How many times you get into an argument with your coach? <laughs> okay? No. The coach said, we're going to do this, and you did it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, one of the great men of God in our community was Coach London. Yeah. Okay. Great principal, great educator, great man of God. And I would ask kids who were at his school, did you ever argue with Coach London? <laughs> 100% of the time, I got the answer no. Yeah. Because they knew he was the authority. Yeah. They knew that he loved them. He knew that he uh, meant what he said. He said what he meant. And if he said something, there was no argument. Mm. So the point is this, is that if you allow your child to argue with, his, argue with you as a parent, what you're saying to that child is, and look, we're all guilty, I get it, but what you're saying to that child is, we're equals. And the reality is we're not equals. Yeah. Next, rehearse what you want. Rehearse what you want. Sometimes, you know, if you're trying to establish a behavior with your child, how to act in a restaurant, how to act, you know, at school or whatever, you may have to rehearse that. And you sit them down and say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what this is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Here's the situation. Here's the circumstance. Let's see how you do here. You know, rehearse ordering a hamburger at McDonald's. Okay. Rehearse being in a room full of people at a restaurant. Rehearse giving the waitress your order and just help them learn how to do that. So when they're in that situation, they feel confident, they feel comfortable. Um, Be sure they understand the lingo. In other words, a lot of parents use lingo that the child doesn't understand. 
So be sure that you communicate well in a way the child understands. And here's the thing that we sometimes forget. Reward them when they do well. Ah, yes. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to give them a trophy, you know, or whatever every time they do what they're supposed to do. I'm not saying that. But when they are improving in a certain area, when they are coming home, you know, consistently, you know, at the right time, when they are responding the first time to you as a parent, when you ask them to do something, you might want to say, you know what? Johnny, I've noticed this. I have noticed that for the last month, every time I tell you to go clean your room, you went and did it. Mm -hmm. And that is amazing. I'm so glad. Look, hey, let me ask you, is there anything you want from me right now? Because Mm -hmm. you know what? I am really impressed at the fact that for the last month, I asked you to go clean your room and you didn't give me any back talk. You went and did it right away. And your room is amazing. I can almost guarantee your kid's face is going to light (laughs) up with a smile. Exactly. And so reward when they do well or when they get that, when they pull that, Algebra from a C to a B minus. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, reward that. Here's the goal. The goal is this, and this is something that we don't hear a lot about, but the goal is let your child know. This is the goal, okay? This is, this is where we're trying to get to. Let your child know you will say yes to them when they ask for something, unless you have a valid reason to say no. But mm-hmm. they must ask, and whatever answer you give to them, they must submit. But the goal is, I will say yes to you. You want to go to your friend's house, you know, and until and, and 8 o'clock? I'll say yes unless I have a valid reason to say no. That's really okay? good. But, but here's the thing. What that does is that takes away, in many cases, the sneaking around, mm. the manipulation, yeah. the, the, the pitting mom against dad or dad against mom. Mm. But just let them know, here, here's the goal. When you get to a place to where you're doing well, you're improving, I'm trusting you, I will say yes unless I have a valid reason to say no. In other words, the child also knows you're not saying no just to say no. Just to say no. Yeah. Right. The final thing is this. This may, you know, I don't want to end quite on this note necessarily, but in some cases, especially your child gets older, if there is a sense of destruction of property by the child, or if the child refuses to submit to the authority of the home and it gets uh, severe, don't be afraid to call the police. Because here's the point. If they're not listening to you as the authority, they do, need, they do need to listen to someone who is an authority. So, yes, let that be the last, you know, the, the last option, but don't be afraid to go down that road. Here's the primary objective. So number one, respect authority. You want your child to respect authority. Number two, you want your child to respect others. And number three, you want your child to respect themselves. Most important of all, you want your child to respect the things of God. And that that happens when a parent is involved with their child's life, but that requires coaching, that requires encouraging, that requires consequences, which means both natural consequences and perhaps seasons of corporal punishment, and then also requires you as a parent living out the example. Well, there you go. That you have... Some great answers from the Family Answer Man there today on corporal punishment. Is it okay? It depends. Uh, are there other options? Lots of them. Yeah. There are a lot of different options that we can options. explore. Uh, so we hope that today has been helpful to you. Uh, we want to say thank you for joining us on the Family Answer Man program. Again, thank you to Winter's Air and Dave's Smokehouse and Specialty Meats for underwriting today's show. Uh, we are not able to answer specific questions to your specific circumstances, but we do uh, want to be able to answer answer as many of your questions as we can from a biblical worldview. So you can reach us at familyanswerman at liveoak.church. You can email those questions in. And as always, we hope that this episode of The Family Answer Man will encourage you and inspire you to make changes that will lead to a stronger, healthier, and happier family.